Man! As you can imagine, we are absolutely delighted that the Boston Lodge engineering team have won the John Coyley Award from the HRA for our new engine, James Spooner. But it's an engineering award. So what's that all about then? So I'm going to hand over to our chief engineer, John, who's going to explain a little bit about what it took to build this loco and why the engineering award is so appropriate. Okay, James Spooner is um, our newly completed double fairly loco. Um, so double fairlies are pretty unique to the FR, that we're the only place in the world that runs them. Um, and this will be uh, our third running double fairly loco. Uh, it'll be our fifth new build loco. Um, anyway, we, we won the uh, HRA uh, Coily Award for engineering. Um, we've developed this boiler design over recent years. Um, in the 1960s, Hunslet built us two boilers that went into the, the Merlin Emrys and the Earl of Marianas. And uh, whilst they were all right, they did have some design defects and the locomotives were compromised to fit those boilers. Um, anyway, the Merlin Emrys still retains it. It's had lots of remedial work over the years and it's okay at the moment. Um, the Earl's boiler is in less good condition um, it's not impossible that it would steam again, but it would uh, need a fair bit of work. So anyway, so we, we carried on the design development. In 19, uh, around 1990, we uh, uh, did a, a new design, an all-welded design with a conical um, section uh, about here and another one at the other end to relieve the stresses in the Hunslet boilers um, that the Hunslet boilers suffered from um, and that's worked quite well although we've had some issues with uh, stays breaking on that boiler um, there's some details that we didn't like about the boiler so with the boiler in James Spooner we um, did a lot more development uh, and we've made a a hybrid design so it's part riveted part welded it retains the conical sections that was very good in the david lloyd george um, but it has the the overall shape of it means that it can fit the design can fit it within the merthyn emrys and the earl of merioneth if necessary um, and we use the the design for this new loco um, as a uh, basically a, a test um, and it's uh, proved very successful so far um, so we designed this locomotive around the the new boiler design um, and uh, but we wanted the loco to look very victorian so we've taken the best features from the victorian fellies we think the open cab section which is reminiscent of Merlin Emrys in the 1870s and um, the James Spooner, original James Spooner with its bells and whistles and um, yeah so we've got a, um, a locomotive that uh, is modern, very usable uh, every day um, and we hope it will be more comfortable for the crews to use. Um, but we'll look uh, very Victorian and um, hopefully uh, people will like it. We're here in the uh, old loco shed at Boston Lodge to bring an update on the original Festiniog locos. Uh, a number of people have asked uh, online and uh, in, in person saying, could you tell us what the plans are for the uh, original Festiniog engines this year? So very pleased to be able to, able to do that. So uh, as it happens, all of the England engines are here at Boston Lodge in this shed at this uh, moment in time. Very convenient. So first on the list is uh, number one, Princess. Uh, behind me at the moment in number three road at the old engine shed, 
Uh, as you may know, the Boston Lodge interpretation uh, project is working to refurbish the old engine shed and to include some interpretation and some places that people can stand while they come and visit this, this shed and, uh, and take in the atmosphere. Now, part of the display that will be here in the shed is Princess. So, number one Princess will be on number three road, uh, but actually right up towards the, uh, the Bliner end of the shed, uh, where it will be on view uh, and kept safe and dry, so it's uh, accessible to, uh, to visitors. So, that will be staying here. No plans at the moment to do much with it beyond... Uh, giving it a quick clean, but that's about it for now. But who knows, in the future, we may do a bit more conservation uh, work on it and put a few more of the original parts back on it. Just sitting behind that uh, will be the carcass of the original Welsh Pony. So we have the old boiler frames and cylinders from Welsh Pony, which were taken off in the uh, rebuild just a few years ago. Now, they're a really fascinating uh, collection of objects, and we'd like to share those with the public as well. So they'll be sat just behind Princess in the old engine shed. Now, if you look at pictures of the old engine shed in the 1940s and 50s, there was always a dismantled loco in here. It was part of the, the feel of the place, so that's... Uh, what we're trying to recreate in part, so that dismantled loco uh, will be there, sat behind Princess, and uh, it will allow people to have a look and just understand how locomotives deteriorate, actually, and what sort of work is needed to bring them back to life. Number two, Prince. Just a few years ago, in our post-COVID service, Prince, Palmerston and Welsh Pony were hauling nearly all of the trains. In fact, I remember one day when all of the trains were hauled by England engines, and what a splendid sight that it was. Uh, Prince has now come up for its 10-year uh, boiler exam, and uh, it's really pleasing to say that thanks to the fundraising that's been carried out uh, by the society and by the team who've been putting the little envelopes on the train, we think we've got just about enough money in the bank to do the 10-year overhaul on Prince, which is great news. So uh, Prince had been stored up at Glanaputh for a, a year or two uh, to give us a bit of uh, wiggle room, but uh, he's back down here at Boston Lodge now and uh, ready for dismantling. The first job on Prince will be to look at the saddle tank. All the other England engines have had work done on the saddle tank. It's a long time since Prince has, and uh, we rather suspect that uh, it's a bit too thin to go round another 10 years. So expect that to be the first piece of work, and quite a big piece of work, actually, probably all the inner part of the saddle, and, uh, and probably the bottom third of the tank here. But um, don't worry, it'll still look as, as good as this. We did the same job on Welsh Pony, and very splendid that one looks too. So, in terms of timescales for this, hopefully as the summer progresses, we'll get the engine apart. We don't think the chassis needs that much work, actually. Uh, it's had some uh, effort put into it a few years back, in reasonably good condition, and uh, if we plan for it to be uh, a, a low to moderate mile en mileage engine, it's probably OK. The boiler, of course, was the boiler that was new, sat at Boston Lodge back in the early 50s when the preservationists took over. 70 years ago, of course. So a new boiler 70 years ago. Um, it's been used a fair amount, and we think it's in a reasonable condition. But as ever, you can never be sure until you get the boiler off and have a really good detailed look at it. So later in the spring, we should see that happening. Hopefully won't take too much, and we should get it back together. Our objective is to have Prince in action in 2025, because that will be the 70th anniversary of the first services on the, uh, on the Festiniog Railway under the, new, uh, under the new regime. So, Prince, number two, should be back in action in 2025. 
just at the beginning of its overhaul, quite a long way to go. The England engines are really important to us. The original engines from the Festiniog line and um, their, their character is just part of our railway. When we restored Welsh Pony, we had it in mind that by having this one in traffic as well, that there would always be one England engine available, no matter where all the others were in the overhaul schedule. So by now, we knew that Palmerston and Prince would be uh, having their 10-year overhauls, but Welsh Pony would be soldiering on, because plenty of life left in the, the ticket in this one, indeed a, a new boiler, of course. So we expected this engine to be in traffic right now. However, steam engines don't always play by the rules, do they? So Welsh Pony, which was overhauled as a it was almost like a working museum piece, a, a conservation piece, bringing it back to what it would have looked like in 1939. Um, when we did that, we expected that perhaps the engine would cover several hundred or a couple of thousand miles a year at most. But, you know, since overhaul, this engine has actually covered 10,000 miles. Can you believe it? It's done a phenomenal mileage, and what a wonderful thing it has been throughout the COVID and post-COVID period. However, just last summer, uh, one of our drivers happened to notice, thank goodness, that the crank pin, uh, the driving crank pin, was moving in the wheel. And it's not meant to do that. It's meant to move within the rods, yes, but it's meant to be permanently fixed in the wheel. So, fortunately, he saw it and we took the engine out of traffic that very day. So, what needs now, simply, is for the engine to be lifted off its wheels, which will mean that we can get at the valve gear and give that an overhaul, which is uh, now needed after the 10,000 miles. And also that we can get at the driving wheel set so that we can remove the crank pin clean out the bore that the crank pin goes into and put a new pin in in its place. Now it's not a massively difficult job but it's just an inconvenient job in that the engine has to come apart and sit on some jacks for quite a long time whilst we do this. So rather than bringing it in last autumn to do this work we've let it wait until the springtime. Why? so that we could do all the work needed on the double fairlies, the mainstay of the fleet, over the winter, so that we know we've got them in the bag ready for the summer services, and now we can turn our attention to Welsh Pony. If we'd have done it the other way round, we may not have had the fairlies in traffic, and that could have been quite a problem for us. So just a, simply a case of using the right resources at the right time. We hope that by the end of the year Welsh Pony will be back in traffic again and uh, should be solid for a, a few more years after that. Just a few years ago Palmerston, like Welsh Pony and Prince, was in traffic and doing sterling service on the Woodland Wanderers. However, the 10-year boiler ticket has expired and uh, so we need to do something about that. But, of course, we can't mend all the engines all at the same time. We just don't have the workshop spaces or resources. So we have to time this and, uh, and spread them out a little. So in our plan, we thought for 2023, sorry, for 2024, that we would uh, do the work on Welsh Pony and make a start on the work on Prince, which meant that Palmerston uh, would be stored complete until... 2025, 2026, and then we'd work on, on this one. However, we've had a wonderful offer from our friends down the coast at the Vale of Ryder Railway to help us bring Palmerston back into traffic sooner. During the COVID services, Palmerston's, Palmerston's chassis was a little bit loose, and so we did quite a bit of work on it um, and uh, put it into better condition. And so the chassis now is pretty much good to go. So all it needs, we hope, is a retube in order to get its 10-year certificate. I say just a retube, of course, we have to take the engine apart to be able to do that. And that's uh, the thing that we don't have space to do. So those fine folk at the Vale of Rydal have said, please can we have it on display in our new locomotive shed? And uh, we'd like it there for a few months. And then in return for that, they're going to do the retubing work, 
It'll appear at one of their galas uh, at the end of August, all things going well. And then in September, later on in September, it will return to the Festinio Grauway, ready for Bygones Weekend 2024. So there we go, what's not, not to like? By working together with friends, uh, we hopefully uh, will see Palmerston back in traffic this year. So popular is Taliesin that I guess I must get asked about it once a week. When is Taliesin coming back? Well, Taliesin came out of service for its 10-year uh, overhaul. Uh, it's a volunteer, partially volunteer project with Roland and the, and the Taliesin team have been working on it and partly it's a work staff team. So the power unit is currently in the workshops, being worked on at the same time that Merthyn Emery's is having its, its three or four yearly bogey overhaul. So in terms of timings now, well, the boiler <clears throat> is sat in the erecting shop awaiting retubing. We have the tubes, but we don't have the superheater flues, which are, have been delayed coming from the supplier. They're due any day now, and as soon as they arrive, we'll be putting a team together of volunteers and staff to have a big weekend bash of retubing. And uh, hopefully that will then set the boiler uh, on the way to the usual process of uh, hydraulic test and, uh, and examination and, and so on. So I would imagine that the earliest we could see Taliesin back in traffic would be towards the end of 2024. But because it's the engine that's uh, slightly lower down the, the priority order, there is a chance that it might be 2025. But it's on the way, if we get a clear run at it 2024, fingers crossed, and uh, I'm sure the volunteer team will be very pleased uh, to hear from anyone who would like to join them. In other news, uh, we have another locomotive joining us at Boston Lodge here in just a couple of weeks' time. Um, you may have seen on the internet that there's been some, uh, some communications about the uh, former Penryn Quarry locomotive, Nesta. That's one of the little 040 Quarry Hunslets, not dissimilar to Britomart and, and Vellinheli. Uh, the locomotive was one of the last ones working at Penryn Quarry and was shipped to America, ending up in Puerto Rico, uh, where it stood outside, I'm told, next to a swamp in a, in a shed with no roof, um, corroding away. Uh, the locomotive was uh, repatriated to the UK by uh, Rob Gambrell and uh, has lived in the shed at Bala for several years now, where I know a number of people have enjoyed seeing it. Uh, the Richmond Light Railway, with Jeremy Martin and his team, have now uh, bought Nesta and it will be coming here to Boston Lodge, uh, ultimately for conservation, restoration, in fact, return to steam is our, our hope. So the loco will come here in its current condition. Um, some people have said, oh, it should be kept as it is because it's in ex-quarry condition. Let us be quite clear, it's not. It's in ex-swamp condition. It left for America in very good condition or reasonably good condition and it has got a lot worse while it was there. So uh, we don't know exactly yet what the programme will be, but we're delighted to say that the engine, thanks to Jeremy and the Richmond team, will be on display at Boston Lodge. So if you're visiting Boston Lodge this summer to see the new behind the scenes tour, there'll be a little something extra to see as well, which is Nesta, the, the former Penryn Quarry Hunslet, and uh, you can see just what happens if you leave your engine next to a swamp for a decade or two. Uh, a few people have asked us why it is that in February half term 2024 that we're not running trains on the Festiniog Railway. Um, the simple explanation is in front of me. So here at Boston Lodge, where we're working on the lottery funded project, also supported by the Festiniog and Welsh Island Trust and the Festiniog Railway Society. This project requires a lot of work in a lot of places and uh, one of them is right in front of the cottages, number one and two Boston Lodge, uh, and next to the Festiniog main line, where the guys are building some really uh, big noom holes uh, to take the services that come on into the site. As you can see, 
uh, we won't be driving any trains past here until the work is done and the trench has been refilled and the tracks reset. Well that concludes our short loco roundup for now. I'll just leave you with a tantalising glimpse of the top yard at Boston Lodge where all of the old buildings are now really coming together and you can start to see what they look like. In just a few months time all this work will be complete. Uh, you'll be able to see the old buildings in all their glory and in the summer you'll be able to come along on the behind the scenes tours of Boston Lodge and see this all for yourself.